Known as an earth artist, Laddie John Dill has been inspired by the geological formations of the West Coast landscapes and Utah's alluvial plains. A prolific abstract expressionistic artist, Laddie's artworks are of high entropy, that is, they're full of energy, undergoing dynamic change. His art gestures of riveting geometrical compositions and resonating colors excite our senses, inviting us to smell the colors and feel the forms. Working on the floor of his Venice, California studio, Laddie creates large-scale structural paintings from conceptional drawings and intuitive sketches, transforming his ideas into imaginative geometrical shapes and vibrant colors through a controlled 16-step process of casting, eroding, carving, spraying, and oxidation. It is a highly stable and permanent format, utilizing glass, metals, pigments, cement, and acrylic polymer. Basically what I want to do here now is put a wash across the whole surface of the piece. I, I've already cast the glass in different levels and with the pigments underneath them and the cements and uh, then cast the piece solid with the cement and then carved it and then pigment it with the oxides. So this is a, a base color. Now I'm going to take the, uh, the cement which is a cement and polymer emulsion. And I'm going to brush it across here like this and then hit it with fine spray. What that does is uh, simulate like a gravity flow uh, of earth material with water as the uh, moving vehicle. So I, I started to experiment with cement and cementaceous materials and found that I could introduce ground minerals and oxides that were indigenous to certain areas of landscape and like sulfur, red iron oxide, uh, volcanic ash, uh, blue cobalt oxide, quartzites that were ground into powders and then introduced into a cement emulsion which was a binder. So I could paint with it or carve with it and really retain that kind of earth quality that I wanted. Almost like a landscape that uh, had existed for quite a long time. I started doing some collaborations with Bob Rauschenberg, uh, which was a, just a great break for me because I was totally unknown. And uh, we did a, a collaboration of pieces up on a hill uh, in Baldwin Hills. And uh, uh, that was really a lot of fun. And then, then Bob, through that, introduced me to the Sonnenbaum Gallery in, in New York. And uh, shortly after that, I entered my studio situation in, in downtown Los Angeles and moved to Venice and 
then went back and forth from New York, but then I, I moved to New York in the early 70s and, and did a couple of shows back there. And that was a great thing because I kind of leapfrogged over the whole Los Angeles art system. Interest is architecture. Uh, I know a lot of architects uh, that are, I think, fairly cutting edge. Uh, guys like Fred Fisher and Frank Gehry, and I like to see my work interact with them. Uh, I have actually done uh, that kind of thing with with a few architects. Uh, Frank Israel and I were very close. When you work with an architect like like Frank Israel, he's kind of an artist himself, and uh, gives you uh, all the freedom that you could possibly want, and therefore the collaboration was successful. So I think in the future, I think that working with, with architects of that caliber would be uh, one of my real joys, you know, being able to uh, take architecturally specific situations and actually apply uh, some of the principles of the, of the paintings that I do and, and uh, the, uh, the drawings and, and uh, actually have them function in an architectural environment. 